He's a professor of communications and associate dean for graduate studies at the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania. Well, in many stores around the United States and even around the world, there are these boxes called Bluetooth boxes that connect to your phone. And when they do that, they track how you're walking through the store, where you are, and can even change the price on goods. What are they learning about me in the process? Well, what that company does, it keeps, last I heard, about 52 weeks worth of information about your shopping. They may or may not know your actual name. They may just know your frequent shopper card number. And based upon that and the deals they have with advertisers, they will decide what kinds of discounts to give you. Increasingly, loyalty really means rewards, and rewards from the standpoint of the store means getting your information, getting data about you. And they get that data through the barcode that's used at checkout? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes they may get the data based on what you do online. Sometimes they may get the data based on how you're walking through the store with your phone on, if you have the right app, or with Wi-Fi even. Uh, Sometimes they may get the data based upon your walking outside and your app is connected to GPS and they actually can track where you're moving. You can actually purchase the ability to reach a person on her phone as that person moves toward the coffee shop and say, don't go to this place, go to another place. The other thing to realize is, I don't know if you real recognize when you go uh, download an app, the app will sometimes say, do you want us to track your location? Can we track your location? I was going to ask you about that. I get that all the time. Yeah, and sometimes it has nothing to do with the company that you're taking the app for. The reason is what I was saying. The reason is that they want to be able to sell your location off into another company. Thing. Oh. So do you, what do you, what do you do when you get that on your I phone? I don't, I say no. You always say no. But they know that a lot of people simply want to get to the app. So they'll push that button and say yes, okay, and they don't quite think it through. It's all in the impulse. There's an accelerometer in the phone that can tell whether you're going up or down. You mean it's built into the phone? It's built into the phone. And there are companies that use the accelerometer as one way to figure out where you are. And I should distinguish that from the Apple checkout, for example which is a very different technology. That is designed to be quite secure, and frankly, uh, using Apple Wallet to check out, um, to pay for something, can be more secure than using swiping your card. The wallet is an app, and so even if, some, if something goes into your um, text messaging and then you put it in the wallet by clicking on it, the retailer has a way of connecting with you. You thought the uh, Apple Wallet app was very secure? For payment. Apple payment is extremely secure, uh, and so the idea is when you pay, they have a token, so the retailer where you pay will never know your credit card number. It's, if there's a certain way to connect to the cloud where Apple stores its data, where you really, it's very, very secure, compared to, say, swiping your card, and there are even now situations, Terry, where people put fake swipers on top of <coughs> swiping machines. And so you may be swiping it into the wrong place. Oh, Maybe stop. Some, yes, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, Maybe stop. Some, yes, it's crazy. Particularly in gas stations, this has happened. Really? Yes. Ugh. Really? Yes. Ugh. You said that facial recognition technology might be used soon by retailers? Yes, it's already used in Russia. It's interesting. There's a Russian company that uh, actually puts facial recognition technology on the checkout area. And supposedly, the people who are checking you out can know who you are, and based upon knowing who you are and a little bit of what you bought, and how you smile or don't smile in that moment, decide to reinforce your purchase in some way, giving you a discount or something. I went to a, a meeting uh, about a, a year and a half ago where a person at this industry meeting was talking about people wearing implants in their arms. And the notion was that people, he said, and this was a person in a major consulting firm owned by a very big ad agency, he said that by 2028, 50% of Americans would have chips in their arms that when they walk down the aisle and pick up a product, the store will know, based upon the relationship between the chip and the computers in the store at the time, 
how you feel about the product, whether you're nervous, whether you like the price or not, based upon your physiological reactions. And then they might change the price based on that. He went on to say that by about 2050, almost all of Americans would have such chips. There's so much confusion out there. There's so much competition out there that retailers are willing to think of a whole lot of things that seem outlandish. I'm trying to think how much of a discount I would want before having a chip implanted in my arm. And that seems a lot better. In comparison, In certainly. comparison, yeah. Um, Four steps that retailers ought to be moving toward. And they call them, sink me, see me, know me, be me. And sync me is the idea of syncing across devices. So we've been talking about the phone, but it's also your apps on, on your tablet, and it's your TV set, we haven't even discussed that, or your desktop computer or your laptop computer. So that's sync me. Then see me, you know, as you move across the world from your home to the outside with geolocation to the inside the store and passing on information of uh, uh, see me across devices, and then know me as a result of this broad data collection that companies have, buying data about you, keeping data about you, and then in the end, the notion of be me. Uh, in, in fancier terms, it's called predictive analytics. Can I figure out what you're going to do next based upon everything I know about you? It, it reminds me of Eric Schmidt of Google saying at one point, we want to know so much about you and know that you know that. Understand the language that was telling you that? I have learned to understand the Would language. Would I have understood it? Um, if you went further and further down into the policy, you might. A, a lot of euphemisms are used, a lot of broad language are used. They will say things like, oh, here's one that, is, this is not directly related to what we're talking about, but here's one that uh, they'll always say, um, if you go, so a company, a supermarket, a supermarket will say, we do not sell your data to anybody. A little further down, and that makes you feel good, right? Yeah. A little further down on the, uh, on the uh, privacy policy, they will say, we may have advertisers uh, put um, ads on our website when you get discounts and other things, or on our app. And, um, and when you do that, you should realize that if you click on them or do anything with them, uh, the privacy policy is not our privacy policy, it's their privacy policy. Okay? Well, to me, what that just said is everything they said before about not selling your information is untrue. Policies is how often companies say they have the right to uh, follow you around outside the store and to actually trade, uh, to buy data about you that the stores actually will purchase data about you that then they add to the data that they have. Um, and uh, they also, more places than I would have thought, will say that they have the right to look online at what you say and can integrate that into what they are thinking about you. Did it Very well know that the idea of privacy policy means people think that they are protecting their privacy. So often you might be hurt. So sometimes, for example, what you buy in uh, non-prescription pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. can be used together with what you buy in the store to profile you as to whether you're healthy or not healthy. Maybe they may be uh, noticing certain employment uh, relationships that you can or cannot get. What we're talking about as retailing surveillance is really just the beginning of the possibility of seeing people all over the place. I call this the hidden curriculum. What retailers are doing is training us that to get along in the 21st century, we have to give up data. People are arguing in the advertising industry about this, in the NSA and government surveillance about this, but on a daily basis, we're learning this, and maybe over time going to accept this as natural.